Now, we're going to start working with routing policies. Right now, you have the two SIP phones, right, yeah. being able to communicate using SIP registry routing. What we're going to do now is we're going to have an AC23 phone registered to CM, and we want to make calls from the SIP phone to the AC23 phone. You now know that that's going to happen via network routing policies because that phone doesn't have a user profile in session manager. Instead, it has the profile in CM. On, in, in CM. C, so, SIP routing design overview. What it says here, network routing policies determines how all calls except internal SIP phone to SIP phone calls are routed. Uh, lots of planning, you know, lots of planning according to this. And it's actually not that hard, but let me cover those slides. So a lot of questions, let's say, need to be answered before you configure routing. Like here, what? What are the SIP domains or what's the SIP domain? Maybe you have multiple domains managed by your session manager. Maybe not, maybe just one. What SIP entities uh, exist, you know? Do you have already all of the applications that are going to be involved in that routing define it as SIP entities? Remember that a SIP entity is just an application that wants to communicate directly with your session manager. So in this case, you know, what you, if you have this session manager, CM and the SVC, CM and the SVC needs to be defined in session manager as SIP entity because they want to talk directly or communicate directly with session manager. How many digits is the entity expected? Maybe you need to modify, remove digits or add digits. What are the extension ranges? Or then is digits expected by CM if this SIP entity is CM? What type of endpoint is placed in the call? An H23 phone, SIP phone, digital, analog? It makes it look like it's complicated, but it's actually not that complicated. When? Another question, when are you trying to route? Well, you could route based on time and based on the date. So, there's uh, that kind of routing. Where? Where is the SIP entity located? How many locations are there? Are you trying to do some location-based routing? Maybe, maybe not. But you have the ability to allow some locations from using the routing policy and some other locations just deny the routing policy. How do you need to adapt the message, the SIP request? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're trying to communicate with a third party application and you do need to adapt the message. Maybe it's not a third party application, maybe it's an Avaya application, but maybe you need to insert or delete digits. Notice that they're saying here, uh, do I need I mean, what digits do I need to insert or delete to normalize the dial pattern? Your carrier uh, is probably going to expect the dial number and also the dialing number, but then both uh, Dennis and Annie to be expressed in the E.164 format. You're familiar with that one? That's a format that starts with a plus sign country code, uh, area code, and then mm -hmm. some digits, mm -hmm. right? So at some point, you need to normalize that number. It could be right after libcm. You could normalize that number here, right? After libcm, you could normalize it here in session manner as an incoming adaptation. You could normalize that here, session as an outgoing adaptation. You could even normalize it here in the SBC. So, and again, normalize in the number is just converting that number to now be expressed in the E.164 format, which again is a plus sign at the beginning country code, area code, and then the number. Normally people normalize the number 
either here or here. You know? right, right after CM made the routing decision, which is in the route pattern of CM, you could insert or remove digits, right, in the mm -hmm. route pattern, remember? And that's a post-routing decision. Because at that time, the routing decision is made. Where could you insert or remove digits in CM pre-routing? That in would allow you to, mm, that doesn't allow you to insert yeah. or remove. That allows you to actually just change what? the caller ID. Yeah. That would be the caller ID. That would piece. be the caller ID. The place right. would be ARS. the digit conversion table for either AR, AR or ARS. Yeah. That's pre-routing. At right. that point, the routing decision hasn't been uh, taken. Correct. Right. So not only people do it here, post-routing in CM, in the route pattern, or it could be done here in session manager as an incoming adaptation. That's another place where you could normalize the number. We'll talk about adaptations later today. So, so you get to, so you know uh, you get to know how to apply adaptations in session manager, how to normalize numbers. Okay, so pretty much, yeah, a lot of things to consider, but actually it's not that hard to configure net routing policies. Let's see, quick review. Routing design requires the following. Definitely not A. Why would you ever ask the customer? <laughs> 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 thanks, thanks for laughing. I'm what? I'm fired? Huh? What? <laughs> Route yourself no, to no, HR. <laughs> Probably all of them. Well, I'm not sure about license yeah, keys. Yeah. Yeah. Everything but D. <laughs> now, routing components. So, this slide actually comes from back in the day, you know. So it's been there since release probably 5.2 yeah it has those numbers on top of the uh, what's the name of this yeah. Bins? Yeah. Bins. Yeah. Bins. because the number tells you what thing needs to be configured first so for you to configure a network routing policy you need to specify the destination zip entity the time range where you want the policy to be active the dial pattern that's going to be associated to the policy and or a regular expression. So even, even though there are only four things you need to configure, the four things you see here, even though there are only four things, those things are so interconnected with other things that you actually end up having to configure all of the stuff that you see on top. And the number that you see on top of each bin is the order of configuration. Uh, so you first need to configure a zip domain, right? Then what? Locations, then adaptations, then zip entities, then entity links, then time ranges, then dial pattern. Avaya got smarter with release 6.0, and now you don't need to remember all that. All you need to do is go to routing and start from top to bottom. You know, so just you just go and check your domains. Do you have all of the domains that you need? Maybe yes, maybe not. Locations, do you have all of your locations? All the locations you need? Maybe, maybe not. Adaptations, do you need to create adaptations? Hmm, maybe, maybe you're trying to modify the dial number or maybe the caller ID, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you're trying to send this to a third party uh, application, so you need to apply some sort of adaptation. Then zip entities, then entity links. You see, so you just follow the order that you see in this slide and you don't have to remember it. So that's why I was saying that this slide comes from back in the day where we needed to remember that order. Let me go to full screen. So first if domains, then locations. Remember that locations allow you to specify an IP address range for each location. And it's because later you're able to allow locations to use the routing policy or deny locations from using the routing policy. Everything is domain-based routing, remember. No matter if it's zip registry routing or, or network routing policies, everything here is domain-based routing. And also, I think this slide was in another chapter. Remember that the ports 
that Sessionmark right now is uh, has as listening ports need to be the same ports that you configure in the phone when you register. Otherwise, the phone will never register with session man. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, okay, locations allow you to associate the location with an IP address pattern. Let me just move on. Adaptations allow you to modify or normalize normalize digits. Uh, and also, it, uh, they allow you to modify SIG headers. We'll talk about adaptations with another chapter later. And we will have an exercise. SIP entities and entity links. Remember that everything that communicates with session mind directly needs to be defined as a SIP entity. Not the endpoints. The endpoints, uh, if it's a SIP endpoint, it registers with session mind. So it doesn't need to be defined as a SIP entity. If it's uh, an H23 digital analog endpoint, it never communicates with session manager directly. It does it through CM. So it doesn't need to be defined as a SIP entity either. Entity links, as we'll see in a few minutes, allow you to define the port and protocol for the communication between session manager and the SIP entity. Okay, what was it again? The, the links? The entity links. Uh, allow you to configure a port and a protocol okay. for the communication between session manner and the SIP entities. Time ranges. Allow you to specify a time range where you want the routing policy to to be active. You know, so you, you could say, hey, this I mean, oh, this time range which could be working hours, right? I'm gonna route to a specific place, and then over the weekend I'm gonna route to a different place. So you would use time ranges for that purpose. Dial patterns, that's pretty much a pattern that's gonna match with the dial number. And if it matches, a routing policy is gonna be associated to it. So take a look at this. It says session manager looks at the digit dial, I mean at the dial number, and that's, and that's a dial pattern match. And if it finds a match, then it uses the routing policy associated with that dial pattern. Do adaptations always take effect prior to dial patterns? No. Uh, here in session manner we also have a adaptation that takes effect before, that would be pre-routing, and adaptation that would be after dial patterns that would be post-routing. Just as in CM, you know, you have a way to adapt before the routing decision is made and after the routing decision is made. Hmm. Quick review. Let's see if you have a good memory because this is kind of I don't like these questions, you know. <laughs> Which group of network elements is required to build routing policies? <laughs> so would you go with group A or group B? A. Group A. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like the questions where they try to play with words like SIP endpoint links instead of SIP entity links. Mm. I hate those questions. It's like, who cares? <laughs> who cares about that? I mean, if you're able to configure this stuff and know how it works, I mean, especially when you go to a certification exam and they ask you these kind of stupid questions and they, got, and they get you, you know? They get you like, okay. They, they, they confuse you. Yeah. Okay, again, this is, the, this is what we're gonna be doing in the first lab exercise for routing. Calling from the SIP phone to the H23 phone. Now the H23 phone should be able to call the SIP phone without routing in session manager, right? Because the destination would have a user profile. All you need to make sure for the H23 phone to call the SIP phone is that CM is able to route to session manager. From there, session manager should be able to route to the SIP phone. Right? Maybe you wanna try that when you do the lab. 